open the meeting at two is it two oh five PM the Southwest Vermont Supervisory Union Board of Directors uh for Wednesday, April twenty two. Um I'll read the agenda very quickly. Uh, item one, we'll talk about in a minute, but reorganization of board and appointments to committees, public comments, finance operations, which includes treasurer's reports and a procedure for executing contracts, the consent agenda for minutes, warrants, resignations, and nominations. There are no policies. Superintendent's report, chair's report, uh, other, and FYI. If uh, that agenda is uh, okay with board members, we'll proceed. Are there any changes anyone would like to make to the agenda? No. Hearing none. No. I would I would recommend that you table item number one. Uh, item number one, yeah, I think uh, on advice of council, um, we don't have any place to go with that, I guess, because Mount Anthony doesn't yet have a uh, meeting, if I'm correct, right? Right, they have not appointed who their members will be yet, so the others will continue until they reorganize. So advice and council was the hold on reorganization until your May meeting when MAU has had a meeting to, to uh, nominate their members to the issue. I'll second that uh, from, well, I'll move it and somebody else can second it. Is there a second? Okay, we have a motion to second. Is there further discussion on reorganization? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And I hear no abstentions. Uh, item two, uh, uh, item one, uh, the motion passes to table that um, issue. Uh, public comments? Are there any? I'm not seeing any public members in the meeting right now. Okay. Uh, seeing no public comments. Item three, finance operations. Um, we have uh, two treasurer's reports, one um, for January 31 and one um, labeled February 29. Uh, is there a motion to accept those reports? So move. Do we have, second. A second? we have a motion and a second to accept the treasurer's reports for January and February. All uh, further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Are there abstentions? None. Then the motion is passed and the treasurer's reports for January and February accepted. A procedure for executing contracts. Is this your ball game, Renee? You have the wording in your, uh, the motion is in your wording. I mean, is in your packet or should have been. Is it? Yeah, language for procurement to execute contracts. Uh, we do this every year um, when you're reorganized, but you're not reorganized, but the board, we're asking that you still do this at this time. The motion is to authorize the superintendent I just admitted Shayla to the meeting too, but let me unmute her microphone. Okay. Shayla is now in the Hi, meeting, Penny. Richard. Okay. Yep. To authorize the superintendent or his or her designee to execute on behalf of the school district, purchase orders, agreements for counseling service, services, grant agreements, and other contracts arising affecting the routine operation of the school district. The superintendent or designee shall not execute any contract resulting from a public bid process, any employment agreements, and any long-term contracts without the express authority of the board. So that is the statement. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Second it. We have a motion and a second. Is there discussion on the procedure for executing contracts? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Are there opposed? Aye. Did I hear an, an opposed, opposing vote? No. No. All right, and no abstentions. 
In that case, the procedure for executing contracts, as Jim read, is passed. Item four is the consent agenda. Um, that includes minutes from January 22, um, warrants, resignations and nominations, and um, I think one retirement. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second it. We have a motion and a second. Is there discussion on any of those items in the consent agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No abstentions? The consent agenda is approved. Uh, item five, there are no policies at this meeting. Um, we're on to item six, the superintendent's report. Good afternoon. Um, many of you were on the Zoom meeting yesterday for the Union Elementary School District, so you may be hearing some repeat information. But um, so let me start with something that is not uh, was not on the Union Elementary District, and that is uh, the letter that uh, the chair Dick France and I received from the um, Vermont um, State Board of Education this morning. Um, telling us that there will be no delay in the merger with Arlington or Sandgate and that we need to uh, move forward with the planning of um, merging Arlington and Sandgate into our supervisory union. And this was personally discussed at their March meeting. Um, I didn't receive that from the Secretary of Education. I received it from the chair of the board so that did seem a little bit unusual, but um, because, and Dick can speak to this, you know, there was a letter that we were going to share with the board that Mount, uh, that um, Arlington had asked. So I'll stop Dick if you'd like to address that. No, uh, I don't need to say anything more about it, Jim. Um, they had asked for that extension and asked this board to sign on to that so that we have a kind of a unified front um and requesting extension from the um state board and that's where we are were yeah but the state board has spoken so and said and it was the letter was pretty blunt in its conclusion saying that there will be no extension and basically they consider the matter closed and we need to move on with that merger so i will be i met with our directors earlier this morning and uh we had a brief discussion on that, but we know that we need to move forward, particularly, you know, and Renee's in on this, this meeting right now. The impact's gonna probably immediately fall on her. So while we're dealing with uh, potential, some severe budget um, crisis crunch coming forward in 2021 and 2022, we're going to have to figure out how we uh, make operations uh what that looks like as we're merged with those um with those the other district so can I, i'm gonna start like i i see that like um scott you your picture disappeared you muted your microphones um square okay you you muted yours i'm assuming you did that on your own because it's something that's going on where you are right because I, I was about to unclick you and then it dawned on me that you muted your own microphone is that is that right yeah good okay I mean, for me to have it because I always I'm on conference calls all day and I, I right it's not. yeah if if I wasn't the superintendent I'd have my microphone muted until I wanted to talk to and I had told you in the instructions that that's how I was going to do it just because you never know what background may be but it's a small enough group that we're, we're moving forward so we will um, um, administratively put it and I've already reached out to and had a couple of email chats with the superintendent at Baton Kill Valley because they received the same letter today too, saying, like, so here we are on, and I forwarded the letter to our attorney once I received it saying that, well, it looks like, you know, the decision is final. So we need to, particularly around uh, Renee's area of um, responsibility. And this has also come up in negotiations as we're in contract negotiations. Are there any implications between taking on a, of the district that has a different contract. And uh, we don't think that there is because their contract is for them. You know, we can have different contracts under the same supervisory union. We've been unique that um, 
as a supervisory union, we were always kind of unified that we had a, um, a unified teacher's contract and a unified policy manual, but it, it, it seems like that's not going to be the case that they're going to have their teacher contracts and their policy manuals, but operating under the supervisory union, at least initially, I don't see like anything being merged under that way, other than special education and transportation. Those are, those are concerns for me because they are a function of the supervisory union. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about, um, we're starting planning for, for two things. Uh, the budget uh, impact that, that I spoke uh, to you about uh, just a minute ago that we're, we're, what we're hearing, the term that the state is using is clawback of funds um, from what we thought we were going to get from the Ed Fund for 2021, getting clawed back from the state, uh, potentially equal to what we may receive from the CARES Act. Um, so we are looking at all proposed spending and contracts for the 2021 uh, at a brief conversation uh, with the Teachers Association that we uh, need to have a meeting with them, potentially uh, having discussions about the impact of where this is going to affect everyone. And everyone is, uh, I think that we're hearing is the impact could be severe, more severe in 2022, because say the budgets are set for this year, going, you know, July 1, 2021. But uh, the, we, our budget may have passed, but the question is whether the Ed Fund will have the funds to support the budgets that have been passed. And the indications are that it won't. So we're, I have froze spending in all the, um, all the schools other than for emergency or essential spending or, or things that if, if we don't move forward, it could end up being uh, an either impact, a bigger impact on spending because say we didn't do this particular maintenance item and we let it go another year, then next year is going to be three times that cost because of how far behind or how much more deteriorated. So we're trying to make a determination, but if it's, you know, if it's not broken, uh, we're not fixing it. And um, if it's not necessary, we're not doing it because anything we save out of this budget, we know that will help to um, decrease tax increases in 2022. And um, the next thing we're looking at is what positions are open for next year. You know, we have teacher retirement, we have teachers leaving. We had created some new positions. Um, all of those are considered uh, open right now. And the message we're giving principals is you're going to have to need to defend every open position and whether we fill it, because we know that we're pretty confident we're not going to have the funds to operate that we thought we were going to have. So how do we do that and keep as many of our, our staff um, uh, employed uh, so that we don't impact delivery of services to students? And that's all across the board. That's every department, every function. Um, the message I'm telling directors and principals that you may have to do the same with less. You may have to do even more with less. So uh, I don't want to panic anyone. I know once I say that, people start to panic, particularly our, our staff, um, who rightfully so will wonder, like, you know, are they? What's their future? Um, and I don't want to. I don't want to do that to anyone unnecessarily. So we're we're looking hard at what, without really knowing what the numbers going to be. The other thing we're looking at is what's going to happen at the end of this year. The governor has told us that by May eighth, he will make an announcement, uh, particularly around um, end of the year activities. I think everyone feels for our seniors. Um, and what they're missing in, you know, the culmination of their education, their uh, undergraduate education, um, you know, proms, graduations. Uh, we're committed once we get guidelines from the state of what we can do, whether it's a, you know, a virtual graduation or uh, a delayed graduation, but some, something to give these students the recognition for what they've achieved. And it's not just 
high school seniors, you know, we have, we have um, touchdown moments throughout a student's career, and whether it's leaving the sixth grade at Shaftesbury or leaving the fifth grade at Molly Stark and going up to the middle school or leaving the eighth grade celebration, leaving the middle school to go to the high school. These are all important moments in a student's journey through school. And, you know, we're, we're waiting for the green light from the state that we can begin planning some of those. The Secretary of Education has promised guidance by the end of this month, and the um, governor is saying by May 8th, you know, he'll have more guidance. Um, the Vermont Principals Association, which does oversee sports, has still not canceled the spring sports season. You know, the school is canceled for the year. Um, they said that they will issue by April 30th uh, what they view um, sports going forward for the school year, whether they will, they'll make their decision by April 30th, whether anything is going to go forward or whether that'll be completely canceled. Um, and then I'll get to the part of, and this is where some of you will hear repeats. I, I can't thank enough the people that I work with, um, my staff at central office, um, my fellow directors at central office, principals, teachers, support staff, the Abbey Group, do for the tech department, um, our HR department, and finance. Just people have really stepped up. And as I said, yes, this is when you find out where your all stars are. And you, you, as a school district, as a board, you know, you have quite a few of them, quite a few all stars have really stepped up. And, and sure the Chromebooks have gotten delivered, worried about the ones that haven't gotten through, worried about our students who are homeless, worried about our students who are falling through the cracks or maybe living in hotels or we haven't heard from them. We don't know whether they've moved out of the area and why haven't they gotten their Chromebooks. And, um, and to our teachers who have had their, their professional career upended and being asked to do something that maybe they've never done before. And I think they're doing it well. The attendance rates are, I think, tolerable for the first week of doing this. Numbers are high at the high school that still haven't con con contacted in elementary schools. Um, the percentage of students who are con connected in uh, are, are better, but I think that will change as we go forward and as we define what attendance is. For me, it's a teacher or staff member that makes a connection every day with a student that we know that you know their social emotional well-being is okay. And uh, that's primary. Secondary is uh, the learning that's taking place, the, the lessons that are going forward. Um, I think our students will learn. They may learn in a different way. They may learn things differently about themselves and their families as we go through this and their teachers and develop even a, maybe a stronger relationship with a staff member or a teacher that they possibly never had in a traditional uh, classroom environment. And I think that's a good thing. But my big concern is, like, as I said, who's falling through the cracks? And we constantly review that with our principals and um, trying to put the process in place uh, where, where we can use resources to, to, to get to as many uh, of our students and families as possible. You've heard some of the numbers, I'll repeat it. Um, you know, the, the, I think the total meal count so far is over 30,000 meals have gone out so far in this process. Uh, 1,400 Chromebooks, uh, another 200 that we, would, we think we want to get out to students and families. And some of those may have happened today. I don't have today's numbers. So I, I, what do I worry about as superintendent? Um, the usual money, uh, funding, um, state funding, federal funding, flexibility from the state and federal government that you know, allows us to spend those grants as we, as we need to. And so far, I think I, I've seen flexibility from the state and I thank them for that. Um, that and then, what, what does next year look like? And what does the year after look like? And the, the, other, the other thing that we're planning, starting plan that I just had our first discussion on is the fall. We know that we're out of school for the rest of this year, but um, 
you know, some of the information that's starting to roll out to us is that we need to plan for the potential of a stay in place order sometime in the fall or the winter if there is a resurgence of COVID-19 that we would need to we need to um, still have a plan in place for remote learning in case and we also don't know what the first uh, the year is going to look like I mean there's possibilities of staggered entry days um, or you know a mixture uh, a hybrid of remote and uh, in school learning so that we don't have full capacity in our buildings. Those are all things that are being talked about and we will continue to uh, plan around if that becomes something that has to happen. We will, um, I asked our, this came from, uh, suggestion came from another director. So I asked uh, our coordinator of um, information, Katie West, to develop a survey that's gonna go out to parents um, we want some feedback from them on how remote learning is going. What can we do to assist them? Because we, we are hearing, we're getting some emails from parents who want to let us know. And, it, you know, it, it ranges from complimentary to frustrated to it's just not working for them. And so, but that's who sends us emails. So we decided we want to do a survey out to um all the parents and get back so that we can we can get feedback from anyone who wants to give it to us and what we may have to adapt, especially if we have to develop a plan for the fall. So um, pretty much, I mean, you know that we're in the first week of the continuity of learning. What we were doing up until this point was con the continuity of education. Those are terms that the state has developed a continuity of education was really maintaining and, and reworking and practice learning to get us ready for going live with remote learning which started monday and that's when new topics and education can move forward but priority as i said is making those social emotional connections with our students and making sure everyone is has the ability to, to be fed has the technology they need and um and we're still working. I mean, you know, Vermont Tell has provided um, some of our families with um, portable hotspots to allow um, internet access to families. And we're still working on other um, avenues to get as many people who wish to work with technology as possible. Uh, we do have some that, that don't, and then that's we'll still do the traditional paper packets with them, but understand that when we do those paper packets, we, we don't want them back. We're trying to like everyone, to um, eliminate transmission of uh, trans transfer of materials so that there is no transmission of potential viruses. So if we send a packet home, it, we don't know, it's work for that student to do, but we do not necessarily want it coming back to be corrected. So how do we, you know, those, those are some of the challenges that we face on how do we, how do we, how do we do that? Um, but I think you have some great people working on those challenges. That's, I'll answer whatever questions you have. Jim, would there, be, would there be any benefit to um, Katie West producing something as a regular, on a regular interval to the banner about, um, I don't know what it would start with, but it occurs to me that there's a lot of the mechanics of this situation that people can't understand. Um, yep. Basic things are out in the paper, but um, the banner isn't always complimentary about those kind of things. And I'm wondering if she can produce something in a small, regular yep. detail that would help inform people. Yeah, I, I mean, she's she's in contact frequently with Patricia from the banner. Like I, I have an email from Katie that Patricia sent to her after some questions from last night's meeting that came up. So I will address that with Katie after this meeting. And the other, I, I guess I should use this format to say that I encourage people to go to our website. There is so much material now on that website. Uh, everything from stuff from our tech department, from our curriculum instruction department, guidelines for parents, guidelines for staff. So board members, go, in, go into our, our website and you'll be amazed at the resources that are there for COVID-19. Uh, so, but um, 
I will also talk to Kay that we could do a, we can always do more. We can always, and, and, you know, the banner works for some people, social media works for others. Um, and our website works for others. We still have people, you know, we're trying not to mail uh, too much home and, you know, we don't have our tried and true method of getting, um, uh, information home to parents. You know, we don't have students backpacks to stuff and have them take the announcement home with them, but, um, we are, we're trying to upgrade our communication. It's one of the challenges that you find out when you, you don't have a lot of time to plan for remote learning is we don't contact information is not as updated as frequent people change cell phones. They change addresses. They, you know, they change emails. So, um, updating that database is a lot of work as it changes um, constantly. But so when I say we haven't heard from some people, they may have not have got our message because we might not have their most current, um, current uh, inf student information, contact information. If that's the case, and there's anybody listening to this today, call your school. The schools are still open by phone. The, there is a, an administrator and, and a, an office staff member who's covering every day, the phone will be covered. Central office actually has uh, a person. Uh, there's one administrator rotating into the building um, every day. So there's an administrator on duty in charge in the building and um, a staff member who's answering the phone. So between eight to one every day, central office, you can call central office. If you need to talk to, uh, you don't want an answer machine and you want to get a hold of somebody to, point you to the right direction of where you're getting information um, or call the school, the principals they're, they're everyone you know, we've set up a system where everyone can remotely check their voicemail. Uh, so if they're not, if it's not their day to be in the building, they are checking their voicemail and they will get back to you or get the right person back to you. I'm not a person who considers myself very tech savvy. I don't know what we'd be doing right now if we didn't have those options that Leon's been pushing for years, so. Yeah. I don't know who, I can't take the credit for this. I don't know who started the one-on-one -on -one initiative that we purchased or leased all these Chromebooks, um, but I'm glad that we did. Because if we are rushing to buy devices and then putting them in, hand, in the hands of students who have never used them before, I think this would have been an even more difficult uh, task. So whoever you know, uh, pushed that initiative, uh, I, know, I know I heard Frank Barnes advocated for several times, but I, it may even predate you know, Frank, but that I think we're, we're at a, a very good place because of how many Chromebooks we own that we're, that we're able to, uh, to give out. And they're a relatively inexpensive device. Do, do I worry about what may not return? Um, of course I do, but I think, you know, the majority will, and they're on a 300, $350 device. Um, so, and, and they are repairable too. So, and you know, many of them we buy with three year leases and we rotate them at the end of their life cycle anyways. So, I think we're in good place for that. Could we have done more? Absolutely. You know, the, the colleges are doing better with remote learning, but every student who goes to college is required to have a laptop and they've been doing remote learning even before they had to. So this, um, uh, the, the go from, you know, zero to full operation in the short period of time, it's commendable to the people who made that happen. Um, I think we'll be in a better place if we have to do a smaller version of this in the fall or winter. And it may really change how we d deliver some courses going forward. We've done some, I, you know, I think Leon, I've heard you talk about, you know, distance learning at the high school on more than one occasion. Yeah. Um, we may be more comfortable with that idea, particularly for certain uh, difficult to staff uh, topics that we may do, you know, virtual learning. Um, we may learn a lot from this process. Yeah. Any other questions for Jim? Okay, as far as the chair's report, um, 
I will get together with uh, Todd Wilkins from the Battenfield Valley thing. We um, have been able to communicate freely and they're no more um, excited about a merger than we are. So we'll see if we can um, help organize some of the details that um, we're worried about as school boards. Um, the superintendent's evaluation uh, was due in March uh, due to a number of circumstances. Um, we haven't completed the task yet. Um, so uh, my suggestion um, following Kayla's, um, uh, Chayla's, um input is um, I'll get the issues that um, I have seen um, together and begin a write up and then I will run it through emails to uh, Leon and Shayla and uh, Ray and then we can uh, formalize an evaluation for this year um, with some recommendations about how we would like to do the same thing going forward. Um, so I'll get that to you very shortly so the superintendent could get his evaluation. And we can, I know we missed the deadline, but I did speak with our attorney by mutual agreement. We, we both can move that agreement and I agree. So if the board agrees, I mean, I'm, I'm not worried about the deadline. Well, we'll be talking about it going forward. Thank you. Um, and committees, um, because we didn't reorganize and we don't really have all the input we need, I think uh, we'll leave committees uh, as they are formed already. So um, personnel includes, uh, Ray and Cindy and myself and the Superintendent's Eval Committee, um, we all know who we are here. Um, as a fin finance committee and policy will stay in place um, until we have a reorganization. And the last thing, well, the next to last thing is, um, I actually read the continuity of learning planning tool. I did too. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> 42 pages. Yes. So if you if you haven't read it yet, give yourself some time. But one of the things that it um, demonstrates is how much work um, Jim and staff um, all across the board have put into uh, putting it together. Uh, there's a format there, but you have to fill in all the blanks and designate the people responsible and um, it's an interesting document that answered some of the mechanical questions that I always have about things. So it's out there, um, worth the read. And um, finally, this uh, Jim and staff uh, um, were complimented strongly in a meeting yesterday, um, along with all the educators in our system. Um, Communication, I think, as Jayla said yesterday, is one of the huge issues that is is helping us figure out where we're going and um, whether we're successful where we've been. And um, I just like to pass on the compliments um, of everybody that I've heard. People more or less say, um, "How are they doing this?" Because we never think. Um, of all the little details that go into this kind of effort. And um, Jim, uh, administrators um, all over the, the system and uh, teachers are really putting it to the wall to get this accomplished. And I just wanna pass on a very strong compliment that um, your effort shows this is where the real skills come forward. and. Um, there's a lot of talented, skillful people out there. So thank you. I will pass it on. Thank you. Because as I said, I I am privileged to work with some great people who have really stepped up and, you know, in uh, our teachers and the Teachers Association, which is the pledge to be flexible mm -hmm. and work with us. I can't thank them enough, too, because I'm not hearing that everywhere. I'm hearing, you know, other locations where teacher associations are demanding to do impact bargaining or memorandums of understanding because of changes in working conditions. None of that from our teachers. So I, you know, I want to publicly thank them and appreciate for that, that they understand that you know, things are different and we're going to try and be fair and equitable to everybody. And uh, 
it's it's been a, a privilege and an honor to work with these people, our teachers, our administrators, um, our our professional staff, and our our support staff. Um, it's a different way going to work every day, but I'm still enjoying going to work. I hope the rest of them are too. <laughs> Some of them are getting pretty tired, but we are putting a, I'm putting a, once we remote learning has started, I'm putting a, a, a rotating vacation plan in together that everyone has to, every director ministry needs to take a day. We're developing a schedule so that there is coverage so that, uh, I can rest some people because uh, they don't want to stand down. So I might have to force them to say, you need to, you know, we got you covered for a day and we have your number if it's an emergency, but stay off your, <laughs> and I have, I have had to back at a few people say like, you know what, don't send me an email at nine o'clock at night. You know, and I, <laughs> you don't, you don't, you're not proving to me how hard you work and you're showing me that you're, you need to disengage and rest because we need you for the long haul. So you need to rest. Are there any other items that need to be brought before this board? No. Thank you all. No. No. Then we need uh, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Okay. Stay safe. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thanks.